I wanted to take a moment to say, you look radiant today. Hi, this is Daryl Chesser, and welcome to another episode of Sea Life Television. And I'm going to be reading one of my writings from uh, a while ago. This one is entitled, You Look Radiant Today. All right, let's start reading. Paul gives us a very clear picture of what happens when we believe Jesus Christ is resurrected and that he's Lord. Some may be surprised to read what he says about Moses' law and its effect today. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13 through 18. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. Let's quickly look at the story of Moses and the veil in Exodus. This is in Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 through 33. And it reads, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. His face was radiant because he had been with God. He had been with the Lord. And, and it, it, the reflected glory was there. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and gave, he gave them all the commandments the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. And when M Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. Well, that radiance, what some versions call glory, faded with time. It just, it faded. It did not remain. Let's go back to Paul's writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. It says, but their minds, speaking of people in the world and people of, of uh, at that time, the old covenant, their minds were made dull. The, the, the children of Israel, they had pretty much rejected the law of God. And it says, their minds were made dull, for to this day, the same veil remains. To this day, when the old covenant, Moses' law, is read, when the old covenant is read, the same veil that clouded their judgment uh, remains. It is a veiled glory. It is a it is a hidden glory. It's a, a fading glory. It didn't last, but it is glorious. I mean, you can preach the Ten Commandments for a period of time, and there's, it's, there's a glory to it, but it fades. And then you see that the end is not exactly what you wanted. Sin takes occasion of the law, and, and you, you tend to see flare-ups of all kinds of stuff in your congregation. Because it's not the law that keeps us straight. It's God's love and His favor and His Holy Spirit and being reminded that we're righteous because of his grace, because of what Jesus Christ did and what he did on the cross and through his resurrection. All right, let's read on. Let's see, 2 Corinthians 3, 15 through 18 was where we were reading. It has not been removed, the veil, because only in Christ is it taken away. Listen to that. Only in Christ is the veil taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord Jesus, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord, Father, God, is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. A license to sin? No. Oh, my gosh, no. No but a freedom from law and regulation that weighs you down and binds you and has a curse with it. There is no law without the curse. 
Do you understand that? If you want to keep the law, the curse of the law is the backside of that, and you've already failed in your thoughts, your deeds, your actions. Somehow, you have failed and fallen short. If you're guilty of one law, you're guilty of them all. All right. Let's go back to the same passage. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, we are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, not a fading, but ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Remember Jesus in the gospels, he, he told the woman at the well, he said, the day's coming when you won't worship at that mountain or this mountain, but those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And here it is. And it says, this ever increasing glory, we are being transformed into his image with this ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Wow. Now this is amazing stuff. Paul is not in any way diminishing the law of Moses or the old covenant. He is simply telling us that the law of Moses was perfect and glorious. But it was a glory that had a shelf life. It faded. That glory faded and faded. Still, the law was glorious. But the law was designed to fade when the Christ, the Messiah, showed up. Jesus Christ is the glory of God here on earth. And his radiance is eternal and shining ever brighter and brighter and brighter until that glorious day that we, he returns, until we see his face again. Let's look at what John the Baptist said to uh, about Jesus Christ in John chapter 3 verse 27 through 36 to this John replied a person can receive only what is given them from heaven you yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Messiah but am sent ahead of him the bride belongs to the bridegroom the friend who at attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice that joy is mine, and it is now complete. He, Jesus Christ, must become greater, and I must become less. Jesus said about John the Baptist that he was the greatest prophet among men in the Old Testament. The greatest. I mean, there's that's high, that's high cotton, brother. I mean, you got Moses, Elijah, you got all these. Wow, Samuels and, and Ezekiels and Joels and Dan. Whoa, man, I mean, that's high cotton, bro. But he said, no greater prophet, but he that's in the kingdom of God is greater. I mean, the least in the kingdom is greater. Do you understand what that means? That means the glory of Jesus Christ, of God in Jesus Christ is so magnificent that even his toes shine brighter than the old covenant. That's not a slam on the old covenant. It is, a, it is the finish. It was the intended purpose and finish of the covenant from the very beginning was to get us to the Christ. All right, let's continue to read. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who has come from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He, the Christ, testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God, the Father, is truthful. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you are, dead, you are uh, declaring and testifying and bearing witness to the fact that God is truthful. Truth, truthful, truthful. He is not a liar. He is truthful. Jesus Christ is his son, and Jesus Christ is the Messiah. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives the Spirit, his own Spirit, without limit. There's no baby Holy Spirit. 
There's no junior Holy Ghost that you get or your kids get. There is no little bit. And Jesus Christ didn't have a portion of God. He had all of God. He is God. And when that Holy Spirit comes and moves into us by faith in Jesus Christ and the gift, the promised spirit uh, to Abraham and that gift that fell on uh, Pentecost Sunday, uh, 1500 years, not Pente yeah, Pentecost Sunday, 1500 years after Mount Sinai, the fire came down and lit on those disciples gathered in that area and it came on them and instead of burning and consuming them, it went into them. The power of God, the fire of God, the glory of God was absorbed into us. Now inside of this earthen vessel is this great treasure, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God himself, the Spirit of Christ to lead, to guide, to correct us and lead us and declare righteousness and God, to give glory to God through us in Jesus' name. Let's go on. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands, in the Son's hands. That's in Jesus' hands. And whoever believes in the Son, that's you and me, who have received him uh, by saying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on that cross and that God raised you from the dead and that you have been resurrected to his right hand of power, and you're coming again, and that by your blood and your flesh, you have paid the price for me. You have taken the judgment for me, and I have been made righteous before God because of your righteousness. <clears throat> and it says, whoever believes in the Son, not is going to get, but has eternal life. Has, present tense, has, possession, eternal life. You're not going to have it. You have it now. You are already never going to die. Now, this will. This thing will either die or be transformed uh, from mortality to immortality, or from corruption to incorruption uh, when in the Lord comes back and in the twinkling of an eye. Or we go and our spirit goes to heaven and waits for this reunification of the new flesh and, and this. It, either way, we're living forever. You're not dying. Nobody died and is in some kind of like blackout. I don't believe that for a minute. I believe everyone who ever lived still is eternally before the Father. He's the God of the living and the dead. I mean, everyone's alive to him. He... So whoever has whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. Now, look at this. I want, I, want, I want you to hear me, this next line. For God's wrath remains on them. When, when you refuse to believe, when you don't believe, when you haven't accepted this free gift of salvation, the whole world is condemned. Under the law of Moses and under the judgment of God, it's done. But he said, God said, I want everyone to be eligible for this grace. So I'm putting everybody under that judgment and condemnation so that everyone, no one will earn it. No one is, is born this way. No one is born it. No one inherits it. It is by faith. It is by the free gift of grace. It is by God's love and tender kindness, his mercy, his chesed, chesed, whatever it is, chesed. It's his grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor through Jesus Christ. That's how we receive our salvation. You believe that he accomplished it for us by himself once for all, for all time. That's what Christ did. So, but if you do not believe, you're still, wrath of God is still coming to you after, after you die. There's a day of judgment coming. And when you die, and if you haven't received Christ, judgment's on its way. And the wrath of God is on you. And you may not have done anything, but the only bad thing that you did is you didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that will put you in hell. I'm telling you, not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving his free gift of grace, God's free gift. That's the only way you go to hell. Not because you, you were born a sinner, you deserve hell. Everyone, not one is righteous, not one is good. There's no man good. We've all fallen short. We've all just our thoughts and deeds and actions capable of anything. 
So not one of us are earning our way there. Okay. Let's go just a little bit further and try to get this thing done. So, whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Whoa. He must increase. The one from above is over all. The Father loves the Son. Let's look at one more passage that ties this together. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 3, and then verse 5. After six days, Jesus took with with him, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone, his faith shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. This wasn't a halo around him. This wasn't a reflective glory. No, this was from his faith, face. This was coming from him. He, the glory of God was on him. In other words, life is in him. God is in him. And that radiance is coming from him. Like on the, uh, if you go look at the story in, I believe it's Luke, when the angels came out and declared peace on earth, goodwill to men, it says light shone around them like a halo, the brightness like the sun around them, not from them. And then appeared uh, just then appeared before them Moses and Elijah on that mountain while Jesus is being glorified. And they were talking with Jesus. And while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them and a voice, the fathers from heaven, uh, and the voice from the cloud said, this Jesus of Nazareth is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. And these are the, to me, these are the most important words. Listen to him. Hear him. This is stunning. The glory of God, the radiance of the Father's power and anointing, completely covered Jesus, the Christ. His face was like the sun in its radiance, but there was no veil. And who did God invite into this revelation of the Christ? Moses and Elijah. Moses represents the law or old covenant, and Elijah the prophets. And finally, what did God tell them? Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets to do. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The law and the prophets must decrease, but he, Christ Jesus, must increase. Wow. I bet you didn't see that coming. I didn't you realize, I didn't, I don't think you, maybe most of us don't understand and realize how big our salvation is. A free gift of grace, uh, uh, the righteousness, that how much and how magnificent this really is. It's massive. This knowledge only comes by the Holy Spirit's removing the veil from our eyes because of childlike faith in the good news of Christ Jesus. That's the only thing that will remove the veil. Believing Jesus Christ is Lord because God said he was. Believing Jesus Christ can save you because God said he could. In other words, you're testifying to God that God is true and God is the creator and God is absolute when you believe him and say, Jesus is Lord because God said so. And I know God said so because Jesus, the Christ, is authentic because he pointed to the Father and said, it's only the Father that all things come from. And it is only the Father in heaven, his words and his deeds that I do. Before we leave off today, let's look at what one of the guys at that Radiance Convention said about it. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 through 19. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power. Peter is referring to the transfiguration that day on the mountain. This is his eyewitness testimony many years later when he's writing a letter. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty when he, his face shone like the sun and his, his, his clothes as bright as the stars in the sky. 
Man, this is awesome. He, Jesus Christ, received power and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We, Peter still speaking, Moses, Elijah, Peter, John, James, they heard that voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message, Old and now New Testaments, as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it, the word, to Jesus, as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts or until the veil is lifted from your eyes. Praise God, who is awesome and glorious, who has given us so great a salvation through the one, Jesus Christ, his son. When you believe in Christ, by hearing the good news of your salvation, or the good news of healing, or the good news of provision, or Jesus Christ illuminates and shines on the old and new covenants to unlock truth that God hid for us from the foundation of the world. This is the light turning on, the light shining until that glorious day. Now we walk in liberty, in the grace and the love and the power of God from sin, sickness, lack, hopelessness, and every other evil thing because of the revelation of Jesus Christ as Lord of all. God is always good. He's always kind to those who are in Christ Jesus. Today, if you have not received Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I just want to pray real quick. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring these people that want to receive your son today. And I ask you to save them and redeem them from their sin and change their lives. Cause them to be born again by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, those of you who are wanting to receive him, uh, pray something like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. And I believe that you raised Jesus from the grave and that you brought him to be at your right hand where he is now. And I ask you today to save me to forgive me my sins and to give me the eternal life you're talking about and uh, accept me into your family. And now I believe, as the scripture says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. I believe that today, you who have prayed that with me, you've been born again. The Holy Spirit is coming to you and is going to fill you in the name of Jesus, the free gift of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive this free gift. Be healed and restored and provisioned today. And let your eyes be open to see Jesus Christ in every book of the Bible. And welcome to the family. Thank you, Father, for saving these men and women. And those of you that receive him, turn to John uh, Gospel in the New Testament. Start there. Read that book two or three times. And let it start to sink in. And then the Holy Ghost, I believe, will begin to, to really... Uh, lead you to other places, Psalms, Proverbs, but John especially. I think that's a great one. Thank you for listening. Sorry it took so much time, but uh, I just went in with this saying, you know what? You look radiant today. <laughs>